week's video was going to be about this beautiful new hedge. I just got home with all these, uh, and now the palm tree company just showed up. They told me the week is the 28th, it's the week of the 21st, but it's... That's okay, welcome surprise. A lot to get done this week now. Uh, I need to move cars out of the driveway so a crane can come in here and drop these things off. All right, in a few minutes there's gonna be palm trees everywhere. The next clip, there's gonna be palm trees over the patio. That's exciting. That's exciting. Oh my God, I have so much to do. I thought I had another week, oh my God. Next thing is over, so I do have to, at least with the bigger palms, need to handle those. I can't, I would like to put those where they go, but there's an electrician here, a few of them, working on the outlets and light fixtures in the house, so I can't go over. I can't do anything with palms that need to go over there, but that can wait till tomorrow. I think the first thing I need to do is handle the queen. Look at the queen. I should be walking around looking at the palms, right, and showing everybody how great they're doing. We'll get to that, I promise. But first, I have to get these, at least this one, where it needs to go because if the wind blows it over then I'm screwed. I can't pick that one up on my own. I mean I can, y'all saw me do it last year, but I don't want to. I don't want to have to do that. Could damage something and be a problem. So in years past there's a double trunk at an idiot, which I will show you, that usually goes over here underneath this light fixture or right by it. And the queen has gone here. The problem though is that the queen has gotten so big that you really couldn't even see it because the foliage was growing. See if you go in between these two and go straight up the crown, all the fronds, they're inside the pine tree. So I figured, put the queen over where the adenidia goes, put the adenidia over here. Makes more sense. Only issue, this thing blows over a lot. When I had this queen over here, I cabled the trunk and staked it down to the ground behind it. There isn't really an ideal area to do that over here. So what I've been doing is digging a, just working on digging a great big hole to stick this thing in. It only needs to be about eight to 12 inches from the bottom. So just like kind of close up to where that first row of lines are right there, that right there. I think that'd be good. And that should be enough to keep the wind from being able to shift it around. I think the hole that I've dug here is big enough. I measured it 21 inches across. And then I went ahead and I went out another two inches and then kept going. So it's probably like 24 in the most narrow spot there. I think this will be good. I do feel like I should keep digging though because it would be better for it to be too big than too small because if it's too small, then I will have just wasted a lot of my time and I don't think I'll be able to get it back out on my own. It's not very easily. Or I could, just trying to avoid shoulder and back injuries since it's just getting going. That's where we are right now. The Laurel stuff will be in next week's video. I'm gonna have to film a whole different intro. <laughs> Otherwise, this is going to be so confusing and chaotic, which is fine. That can be fun. Uh, yeah, this is, I don't know. When we cut back, hopefully this will be in the hole. Who knows what day it'll be? I don't, I have no idea. No clue. I'm just going with the flow right now. Look at, look at them. Aren't they beautiful? Kind of frail, apparently. It's already the second front. I'm going to have to cut off of that one. It's, whatever they are, I like them. We'll talk more about that later. I think we have to pick up in the morning because the noise is just, it's obnoxious. It's a little bit more quiet right now than it was, but still very loud. We'll go ahead, tour the palm trees, have a look at everything. Still a lot of work to do. Not even windy. Barely a breeze. Like a very gentle breeze. Like that, that like I said, that, that thing, it was just a wimpy limb. Wimpy frond. It was going to come off anyways. This, oh, come, come on. I, I, new umbrella showed up in the mail last night, so it's fine. Whatever. I don't care. Good riddance. I'm going to <laughs> get this changed out and yeah, we'll pick up in the morning. There's a lot to do. Palms are arranged. 
I went ahead and put everything, no, so I'm, not, I'm not talking through all this. Hopefully it'll be quieter either later on today or in the morning. These things are a lot of fun to take off a table when you can't put them down. I think I'm just gonna cut the cord. That might make it easier. Uh-huh, yes, so much better. The blue is back. I don't, what was I thinking with the orange? It made everything out here look orange. I guess, I, well, I wasn't thinking. Didn't consider that as being an issue until I had the orange umbrella and I saw how orange it made everything. We can go look at the palms in just a moment, but first, let me just take a second to appreciate how beautiful this leaf is opening up on this musa here. It's the musa florida. Look at that. The variegation is kind of gray, almost. It's not that classic white. It's a grayish blue color. I really, really enjoy that. I have a few of these. They were all from tissue culture, so you just don't usually know what you're going to get. I mean, well, you should be getting a clone of the parent plant, right? But what I mean is they were so incredibly tiny when I got them going into a soil, really into a sphagum perlite mix, and then into soil. It was taking them some time to get bigger and show some of that variegation. That looks so nice. Really, really enjoying that. Can you see, I had talked about putting these in those Miami planters where I put the Edenidia palms, and I said, it just didn't seem like a great idea because I don't think that they are, I don't think they would have had the vigor to keep up with the sun impatience. That's why, right there, just not big enough. Okay, finally, at last, palm tree time. It's been a couple of days, a lot has happened, mostly just a lot of cleaning up. There's just dirt and stuff everywhere from moving things around so drastically and chaotically. And then there's, of course, construction sounds because the pool stuff going on up there, which I think they're almost done with, which is exciting. It's been I, actually a lot of fun to watch the machinery doing all their stuff. I don't mind it. It's not great for the audio, but that's whatever. I don't care. Just film in the early morning or the evenings. No big deal. Probably put out like, I'd say three to four fronds since y'all last saw it in the fall time, but it's really thickening up. So this year in the ground, not all the way, just enough to keep it from blowing over. I had to dig that out after they left. I, maybe I mentioned, I don't know, the beginning of this video is gonna be all kinds of messed up. I might refilm an intro that's a little bit more cohesive, but they showed up unexpectedly. They told me they'd be here the week of the 28th, showed up the 22nd, week of the 22nd, this week. So I wasn't prepared. I was going to have a hole dug out to put this pot into so that they could put it in there, but no luck. I got it dug though, but I wasn't done until a little bit after they left. Did have some struggles getting it in there, kind of. I mean, it's it slid right in there, but it, it's gravity, right? So once the majority of the pot was over the hole, the entire thing just went that way. It just fell right over, right on top of me. Not a hard fall. I had it in my arm, so I was more like a very gradual, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, no, no. Mud everywhere from where I had dug this up, so it was very slippery and it just wasn't working. I was just sliding away with the palm tree, uh, but got it up. Wasn't too bad once the mud dried out and there was something to grip onto, and now I'm not gonna have to wrap the cables around it to keep it secured so the wind's not blowing it around. I would like to get in here and clean up this trunk some. It looks like there's probably one, two, three. Is there one on the other side? Another one over here? Yeah, four. Four of those boots could go, probably. I'll let it adjust, get hydrated, and thicken out some more, but those will pop off and expose a much nicer trunk. Love this palm tree. I believe that was just like a little eight foot tall queen palm a few years ago. Remember that when you buy a queen palm. This is that's what you're getting yourself into. They get big and it happens very quickly. Adenidia traditionally has gone over here by that dolphin light, pretty much right where that queen palm is. I think I talked about it. If not, quick revamp. The queen palm, dis we talked about this. Couldn't really see it when it was up over here because the pine tree. So this makes more sense. You can now see it from all over the patio, especially <laughs> going to be even more noticeable as it grows up and those fronds start to come out and come out this way some more and it'll actually shade some things over here, which will be nice. It is a bit sunny right there in the afternoons. Overall, just gonna look nice having that there. The Adenidia here, it's all right. I'm used to having that big tall pot over here, which I mean, it was only a last year thing, but I grew accustomed to it. So it feels a little bit odd having the short little squat pot over here, but I do like it. Looks like it did okay over the winter for an Adenidia. They aren't the best things to overwinter indoors, especially in a 
warehouse that I don't think they keep too terribly warm. The stuff that was planted underneath it, I'm surprised with how much of it is still here. Actually, <laughs> not, not in the best shape, but still here. The curcuma bulbs, some of these look like they're actually probably still viable. There's some growth coming out of one of these. So if I were to just bury those down, I bet those will get going again. This, uh, this was Elocasia macariza um, variegata. But again, it looks like it needs to be reburied. It's got all the surface soil got pulled up. You know, things get flopped around in a truck. That's going to happen. Palladium back here. I cannot remember the type. This came back last year too. And I remember looking at it and going, what is it? I don't remember. Maybe, uh, um, one of the dart frogs, perhaps. I don't know. The focus you don't want to really. Really? Come on. But why? What's the, my hand behind it? Then maybe you're not gonna see it. There's a little leaf with some variegation on it. The camera doesn't want to show you. Looking forward to planting that up, which I think is what I'm going to get started on. At least getting the plants placed and uh, brainstorming what to put where as soon as we're done talking about the palms and how they did. These two by the pool. Uh, I'm gonna save that for last. Look at these queens. They look nice. They did an okay amount of growing while they were gone. Remember, these were only gone for like six months seven months and they're in a big warehouse with a translucent roof where they keep things i think in the 60s so don't expect much from them while they're away but they're looking good that's about what they looked like last year maybe they've thrown out a couple more fronds perhaps hard to say i really do like them in this spot though everything going on in front of the spot well that needs some work look at this just a disaster over here I've been mixing up potting soil and I had to move everything because the same day the palm trees came, an electrician was here working on outlet that's directly behind that cabinet. And uh, regardless, all this is going to be gone, hopefully in a few weeks. Might be a month or so, depending on availabilities of some things, but this area is going to look different, hopefully by midsummer. That's the plan anyways. And the queen palms will be staying there. I would like to get a good amount of growth out of them. Just basically the same as I was saying about this queen over here for the canopy to open up more so that those fronds are doing some more hanging because the spot over here gets very hot in the afternoon. And those are there to help provide some shade and they just look cool, especially at night when these two lights are on, they look beautiful. I like queen palms near lights. I like any palm tree near a light but specifically because they have that tomento, tomento, pimento, they got pimentos on them, tomento. Lots of fibers on the trunk and then that white powder, it reflects light very well. There's a lot of texture on a queen palm. So they look cool when there's a light source. I may put up lighting underneath them just because, you know, why not? That would be neat against the side of the house, especially if I can find some sort of RGB. I can, it's easy to find. I probably have some actually, but that would change colors and just, Look neat. It's been fun upstairs having my house plants so big that I can look out the window and see their fronds moving around when you're in the shower and getting out of bed. Plants get big. Nice big queen pumps. Again, not much else to say about them. This one got repotted last year. I should probably repot this one too, but it seems to be doing fine. So I don't know. I don't think I will, but we will see. There's so many other projects going on right now that uh, that is just gonna have to sit on the back burner for a moment. There are just so many other things that I need to get through first that are more of a priority. It's fine in the container that it's in. The one over here, the trunk does have a slight curve to it. So it's leaning away from the house. Some isn't ideal. I'm going to see if I can correct that. That's more like just at the base. It's just starting to get a very slight angle to it. And it's slight enough that if I just push it back further that way that should straighten itself back out. I love a palm tree with a curved trunk, not in a container though, because they just, they're just, it's gonna wanna fall over all the time. And that's not ideal for near the house. That's why they don't look perfectly symmetrical with those lights because there's more distance here between this queen palm and that light than this one and that light. That's just because this trunk is curved out from the house, just a smidge. The adenidia, it's, it's still alive. Low, low threshold for satisfaction when it comes to adenidias in winter storage. I love this palm tree though. It's done well. It has a couple of sheaths that need to be cleaned off of it. Now, yeah, the Alexander. Oh, and the Robolini's down there too. Okay, looks pretty good. Oh, you can't really see it that well from here. I wanted to show off the height. Did a good amount of growing considering what it went through before it went there. Y'all remember this went through a few nights of freezes in the 20s, had it laid on the ground, 
wrap with lights, wrap with frost cloth, and just had to keep my fingers crossed until they got here to take it. And it survived, which I'm very surprised by. It's still here. Wasn't, I was not expecting that. I'm happy that it worked out. But I would not have been shocked if that palm tree hadn't made it. I was already planning something new for this spot, just in case. Right here, go get it. Oh, you have to think about it all of a sudden? Not gonna jump for it? You don't have to get it if you don't want to. That's fine, you can stay there. It even has some inflorescence coming out, some seed pods on it, which is cool on two of the trunks. It's pretty good. The Robolini, covered in mealybugs. That's why it's over here. I've been laying it down on its side and blasting it off towards the driveway and treating it. I don't want to bring it over here quite yet. I want to give it at least one more treatment before I bring it over towards everything else, all the other houseplants and tropicals. This spot is better because there's not a lot of flowering things in the area, so when I blast it off and rinse it, I lay it down and everything goes towards the driveway. I don't want the stuff getting in with all the flowering plants. Would you not shake your watery self over my legs? Despite having some mealybugs on it, it's, it's not that bad now. I've gotten the majority of them off. Okay, there he goes. Nice big jump. The Robolini is looking pretty good. That's going to be coming back over here, going right here in this corner. And now these things, whatever, I don't, what, what are these? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of like that there. That looks all right. Whatever they are, they have not been exposed to wind in a minute. The fronds have been frail every little breeze it's like another one snaps they're cool whatever they are all right well here's the rundown of what happened with these palm trees right here so there were edonidias in these containers last year two triple trunk edonidias they'd make it through the winter that happens sometimes i don't typically get upset about that as long as they replace it which they don't even have to do it's in the contracts it's if the plant dies in their care they don't have to replace them, but they always have when something like that has happened. And this is what they brought me. And I I like them, but I just, I don't know what they are. The guy who picked them out for me said, he thought I would like these a lot, perhaps even better. And I do, actually, I do like these better than the triple trunked Edenidias. He said that they're more hardy. They have better luck with them in the winter in the greenhouse than the Edenidias. Edenidias have not been doing well for them the last several years in their greenhouse, which uh, same something's changed i don't know what it is but they do not overwinter indoors very easily i am very 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 much a fan of alexander palms over edinidia palms when it comes to if you're someone like me where they need to be outside and inside and outside that and is inside if you don't have a really bright warm humid environment for them over the years, they're just gonna slowly shrivel up and look like garbage the alexanders not so much but the alexanders they're not in production the same way the Adenidias are. They used to be, maybe they were never quite as abundant as Adenidia palms, but they weren't hard to find. But finding 15 gallon Alexanders like that, that's, I don't, people aren't really selling them. Not as commonly. Anyways, when I say Alexander, by the way, I'm talking about Tychosperma elegans, the solitaire palm, not Archantrophoenix Alexander. Those are different palm trees. Back to these. He said that his father, who's the person who owns the company, calls them quassia palms. Q-U-A-S-I-A. -A. And that's, I, I googled that. It doesn't, that's not a thing. I'm assuming that that is uh, old school nomenclature, old school common name for these, and I'm just not seeing anything about that online. He said they're very similar to a bottle palm, but they stay smaller and that they're pretty resilient. Said that they have a similar shape to a bottle palm. They're basically like a dwarf bottle palm, which I can see the base of the trunk, much more narrow than the middle of the trunk. Crown shaft on these, they're not very full, so it's hard to do much as far as identification goes with them because I don't know if these are in optimal condition. How could I know if I don't know what they are and don't have a frame of reference to give to that, right? Something to say, oh, well, this is what they should typically look like, and here's what these look like. I don't, they could be in prime condition. I'm thinking probably not, but whatever the case, it doesn't matter because I do like them, but I do need to know what they are in order to <laughs> care for them properly, right? Uh, my guess is probably something in the Pseudo Phoenix. They have some similarities to them, particularly this one frond that's up there, the rest not necessarily so much the trunks 
kinda. But even when I look at pictures of the the buccaneer palm, they have really neat trunks on them, kind of bottle palm esque, but they don't bend in at the base as much as these do. Not quite. And I'm only looking at pictures, so that is a difficult thing to say. The ridges on them are the let's when I say ridges, I mean the lines, the scars from the old leaves leaves <laughs> from the old leaf bases that come off are very heavy and thick. These don't they're a smooth trunked palm in the sense that they're not a woody palm, but it's rigid, if that makes any sense. They step down. So I'm just guessing Pseudophoenix of some sort, probably Sargenti, I just basing it off of commonality, like would it be normal for them to be supplying these and then just giving it to me if it were something that's rare and unusual? Probably not, right? I don't think so. There's an up close, you can see how heavy that line is there. It's not like a smooth line, it actually like dips in, almost terraced, much smaller at the base than in the middle. And I'm just assuming if these are Sargentii that what's going on up here is very thin and that these need to fill back out and thicken out, especially down here. Like, what's that about? What's going on there? Or maybe they're supposed to look like that. I don't know. So, Southern Florida people, what, 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 do you know what this is? Let me know. Like I said, it's probably not anything terribly unusual because they said it's a palm tree that they supply and made it sound like it's something that they commonly supply. I wish I had an accurate name on it so I could relay more information to you and so I could care for them properly as well. I did end up repotting them. They were in 15 gallon containers and I just moved them over into new 15 gallon containers. Ones that they showed up in, the sides were torn to pieces. There are big cracks and gaps. And uh, if I had stuck those in here and just used the blue pots as a cash pot, which is what I've always done here, then those roots would have come out the side and it would have been really difficult to get them out in the fall time. So I put them into a more heavy duty rigid container. And there is a little bit of room for some backfill, but not much because it was a pretty tight fix. It's from a 15 gallon to a 15 gallon. But that would have been really ideal timing <laughs> to know what they are. So I would know what is appropriate when it comes to the potting medium. So I just went pretty general and went with a very well-drained blend that's very sandy so the water will move right through it because when I took these out the soil that was already in there was extremely sandy. If these are a Sargentii then to my understanding never grown them before only looked at them and admired them and done some reading about them but they're supposed to be pretty sturdy palm trees that need good drainage and in the ground from what I'm told can be pretty drought tolerant. These are in containers so I'm not going to uh, really do much with that information. I want to make sure that they stay hydrated, but I guess I won't freak out if they dry out. They look like they've dried out before, <laughs> right? Pretty thin crown shafts on those. So I'm just assuming that that's from drying out. I don't know. The fronds on them remind me of a, a majesty palm, really. Maybe even Kentia-ish, more majesty palm than anything. Here's a better shot of one of them. I can bring this down lower. You can see it's a very fine leaf. Could use some nitrogen. A little bit of yellow in there. I don't know what kind of sun this is going to want, but it's going to be getting nearly full sun because this is the only spot I have for them. That's where they're going. Not going to be shocked or haven't been shocked about some leaves, some fronds breaking apart because that just happens. One, they were on a truck. Two, they went from not having a lot of airflow to a lot of airflow and uh, now they're just in a different environment. So it's just kinda like when I move my Eureka palm outside, that's, behind, that's why I'm pointing this way. The Eureka, you still can't see it. I don't spend a lot of time hardening it off because it generally is gonna burn and fry no matter what I do. So I just let it do its thing, cut off the old stuff that flushes that with new foliage, and then it's fine. Might be the case with these, but again, I don't know. Oh, same thing with the Alexander down there. It does have some brown stuff on it, but it'll flush back out with new growth and look pretty good in a few weeks. Like I said, it's only been a few days and I do feel like they're doing some growing. I just don't really have any information to give you on this one. And I wish I did. All I can say is that I do really, really, really like them. Head escapes? Maybe? No, probably not. Because again, those don't bend in at the base. Again, comment down below. Let me know. I very... Excuse you. Hello. What was that about? I would appreciate some feedback here because they just seem so skinny to me. To be a buccaneer palm, to be a sargentii, those are generally pretty thick, like big trunks on them. 
and I'm not used to seeing them bend in at the base like that. But again, I've never seen one in a 15 gallon container before. I've only ever seen them in the ground down in Florida. You're, it's a totally different animal with some palm trees between growing them in the ground down in Florida versus in a container. Like Adenidias are always scrawny up here. It's really hard to find a nice, fat, juicy Adenidia palm this far north because you just don't have the proper humidity and heat and all that, the VPD. It's just not quite right for them to have them produce those big, thick trunks. Maybe that's what's going Just let me know. All that leads up to is I don't know what I'm going to plant up underneath these containers because I need to know what these palm trees like. I need to know their preferred conditions. If it is one that's not going to like a lot of moisture at all times, then I'm not going to be putting impatience in here. And actually, regardless, I might be going with Vinca and Verbena in here because I don't want to put impatience in these, period, because those are going to grow up and hide these trunks. And these trunks are freaking cool. And look at those. I don't want to hide that with some impatience. I would like to fill this in because that looks like garbage down there, but I don't want anything growing up in front of these because a big part of the appeal is the way they have that really weird shape to them. Whatever they are, they're really neat. I've actually been thinking I might do something totally different this year and not go heavy on the flowers in these two, period. Because the ones down here, the hydrangea planters, very vibrant and colorful. And there's so much color in the garden everywhere that I don't have to have just pops of color in these containers. I may even, well, probably backfill them mostly with soil and then top it off with sand and just do white sand and some shells and maybe a couple vinca or verbena or both in these so they just kind of look like little beach pots. That might be kind of fun. I don't know, I have to think about that one, excuse me. And now I'm going to start placing the annuals. I don't think I'm gonna get around to planting all these in this video just because it's already the day before this needs to come out two days before the evening of the day. You don't need to worry about all that. Only so many hours in the day. I'm looking forward to, I'm looking forward to what I'm about to do right now. Getting all this crap off the ground. Oh, I forgot. I have four more of these tropical storm colocasias here that I ordered these, oh shoot, with the intention of putting them around those Adenidia palms. That was the inspiration for that video was I had talked last year when I had the Adenidias on each side of the steps here about how uh, I loved the impatience in those planters, but when I pulled the impatience to Impatience. when I pulled the impatience out to uh, get them ready to be taken away for the fall, I saw how beautiful the trunks were looking on those Edenidias, and I was like, well, I don't want to hide those next year, so I figured I would try and find a dwarf variety of Colocasia. There's the Falifax. I forgot to mention that in that video, but from everything I know about them, they don't like really intense sun, so that wasn't going to be an option, and Tropical Storm was the first thing that came to mind that I really wanted, so I got two to put on each side of those containers. I don't, I don't want colocasias in these though. Shocked to hear myself say that, that I'm even thinking it, because you know, I stick colocasias everywhere, but I really am digging the vibe of these being more plain, maybe with a cascading vinca or something like that. But again, I just think some sand and some shells, maybe drop a coconut in the top, something like that. I think that I would like that more than having a lot of stuff growing in them because a lot of the other containers around here have a lot of them. I'm going to have more because you know all this. You know, that's probably not a big deal. I can always find places to stick an elephant here. For now, let's work our way through here. So I think I only have two of these. These are the just regular pink sun impatients, right? Or do you have a special name? Set this down, have a look. Compact hot pink. Compact hot pink sun impatients. I grabbed a whole bunch of those hot pink and orange to use as the border here in the garden. Orange and uh, purple Magic Mountain, something like that, and those containers, then I have orange and the Miami planters down here. So I was thinking, since I have two pinks, and I think only one orange, let me look. I don't see another one, so I think that's it. Over here, just to help tie the yard together, I could do a pink right there. Another one on this side, and then can grab the orange, I'm reaching behind myself, and plop that in the middle. And then there'll be a little hint over here of everything that's going on on this side of the garden. Help just bring things all the way around. I think that that'll look nice too if the gingers coming up with their little red cone flowers right above there. Nice pop of color. That'll work. I'm gonna need to adjust that Macorrhiza that's in there. I'd not want to get rid of it. I like that plant, but 
I think that it would do fine if I just scoot it over. It should grow up and through the others. If not, I have a whole bunch of them. They offshoot like crazy. I have a Wanjaloba sitting in the back here. I don't... I don't know if I'm loving it. I'm not entirely sure why I even bought it. I bought two of them. I was just so excited to see them. But I, it's because I miss the Ludias. The Ludias were my favorite. I haven't seen them for sale in years. And these give me Ludia vibes, but it's just not the same. Like a rebound plant. Just sort of thought it would satisfy me for the moment. But when all is said and done, I don't really want it to hang around. Maybe. Sometimes I have to set things in the containers and sit back and just ponder it. So that's what I'm going to do here. There's, I could do more here though. That's a good size container. Persian shield. Gotta have a Persian shield over here. The foliage. I mean, come on. Have to. Get that purple in the background. Oh yeah. That's gonna look good. Should I do both of them over here? One on each side? Kind of have to. That's the problem with the two trunks is it makes things seem like you have to go very symmetrical. I'm not a big fan of the two trunked Edenidias, despite the fact that I know in the last vlog I bought myself two more. I'm allowed to be inconsistent sometimes. Just let me do my thing. They're little and they were cute and I really liked them. If they had had them in triples, I would have bought the triples. They're perfect for what I needed down there. It's when they get bigger, I just think that the double trunk Edenidias look kind of dumb. Yeah, I do like that. When these get bigger, there will be that nice lush purple in the background. There should be enough sun for them right here. Maybe the Persian Shields. A good amount of morning light is best for them, and I've planted them in similar situations like this before and didn't get a lot from them. But that was before the maple got pruned, and that's letting in some more morning sun than in the past. A trailer? I, oh, I don't know if I have a trailer for these. I'm gonna have to think about that. Also just realized my exposure has turned way up because I was in the dark a little while ago filming something else. My bad. Can always grab more trailers later. Now these, I'm so excited about these sun and patience. That like fruit punch color, that rosy color. They think they're called rose something sun patience compact rose glow. You see it? That's the, that's the best I can do right now. That's the best I can do. I would like some of these over here underneath the queen palm. Yes. Yes, that's gonna look good. Actually, I wonder how many of these do I even have? One, two, three, four, five, I have six. There's six of them. So there's still lots of places to put these. Another one over here in the corner. That's probably not going to flower as much. Sun and patients do need sun <laughs> to flower abundantly, but they'll still bloom, just not as heavily when they're, I like that. Look at that, it's a nice pop of color. And that leaves me with four more of those. And I think that I want to put those probably underneath the Alexander pot, my mic dongle broke and no, it's swinging around in front of the lens. That's the decision I have to make. Do I do the uh, rose glow underneath the Alexander palm or do I do the compact neon rose? Let me double check the name. Compact deep rose. Compact deep rose is one of my favorites. I have one, two, three. I have six of these as well. Hmm. I don't know. I've stumped myself. I have to think about this for a moment. That'll work. I forgot I had two more <laughs> big orange sun impatience. I was going to put them in the deck planters, but I changed talk about that when I get over there. I think that will go well. It's a different pink from the pinks that are over here, but that's okay. It just brings a little bit of taste to this corner of what's going on on the other end of the patio. I think I might be kidding myself though, like I'm, as if I'm really going to be able to get this thing planted in there. Probably not. I don't think so, but I'm gonna try. Oh, and the Pharaoh's mask. Survive the winter. Look like crap, but that's pretty normal. I was hoping those would do okay in there since I didn't pull any up to save for the winter time. I have to remember to do that this year. I have to make sure that I hold some aside for myself. What was I? Oh, variegated sun and patience. That's going in there. This one, the tropical rose. That'll go underneath the pygmy date palm. I'm gonna do a couple of these over here just because I like the way these play with green. In green, I'm gonna put a lime zinger xanthosoma in the front of this container. Don't know if I'm gonna keep the Chinese fan palm here or not. I think I'm probably gonna do a heliconia in the ground right here. Though the Chinese fan palm does a better job at covering that pot. I don't know, the heliconias show up in the mail tomorrow. I have to have a look at them, see how full they are. Made a dent, nice big dent. Things are clearing up over here. I had mentioned in a previous video that I was going to do the orange sun impatience in these instead of the compact deep rose. I've done the compact deep rose in these for the last few years. Thought I'd switch it up just because I do a Super Tunia Vista bubblegum over the front of these and the two pinks kind of clash, but I was just, I was thinking about it and I don't really care. They can clash, it's fine. I like this color over here at night. It glows, it doesn't show up on camera how it is. It's a beautiful color. And I have sun again over here. So I'm thinking probably gonna do a hibiscus in the front of each one of these. One of these, it's either tequila sunrise or 
Love on the Beach, can't say the real name. Starts with an S, ends with an X, you know, YouTube and all their rules. But I'd need to grab another one, but I could put one of those in the middle of each one with these sun like look at how good these look together that's a great pairing again it's just you can't see it i've tried different filters and things to try and bring out the color of this one you just have to trust me they look really good together so i'm going to grab another one of those and then i can get those planted up so that'll have to wait that's fine plenty of other things to do and then oh a trailer i want to do something big in here so i'm thinking maybe a vista bubblegum <laughs> yeah again the pinks don't go together but the thing is the vista bubblegum just brings it I wish that there were other ones that had the same vigor as the bubblegum, but there aren't, like different colors and orange. That'd be nice. Can we get some orange petunias, please? Ones that aren't illegal. Did y'all know that? That the orange petunias used to be around? They're illegal now because they had a virus in them to make them orange. Can't buy those anymore. They're orange Calibrax, Petcoas, those things, but not the same. Not the same at all. I like that. I don't like it with that sun impatient though. Like I said, I'm gonna play around with things. The gnats are absolutely horrible. I'm being eaten alive. I'm gonna pick up on this in the morning when I can be out here and actually have my mouth open without having bugs flying in it and not getting chewed up. Hold on, wait. Y'all were just gonna let me put that in there? That doesn't, I can't put those together. That doesn't work. This is why it's important to sleep on those things because the terrible judgment. That would have been on y'all if you let me do that. It doesn't look right. That's not going to work <laughs> the next morning. Got my mix going here. This is just standard all-purpose potting mix. miracle Grow that I cut with a bag of miracle Grow organic because it's really good stuff and I like it. like it a lot. Earthworm castings. Good amount of cotton burr compost. I'd say maybe 20%, 15 to 20% to a like, total ratio that's in here. All-purpose slow release. Some of that rose food in there too. It's got the phosphorus in there help promote healthy roots and uh, uh there was something else did i say earthworm castings there's a that's what the darker stuff is on top i need to get something with some grit i'm out of sand so i'm gonna have to make a run to the home depot grab some sand and uh, maybe the pool filter sand because i'd like to see what they have option wise as far as stuff to put in these containers if i decide to do those little beachy pots which i think i'm going to do but it needs to be a nice white crisp sand i have trouble finding nice white crisp sand i've been told by a lot of people through the channel use pool filter sand but whenever i buy it's just brown anytime i buy it the quick crete stuff it's not that nice white stuff at least not where i live you know they mine these things from a different place that's it doesn't matter it's important that this is nice and nutrient rich because this is my backfill so everything that i'm planting as i'm potting things up i want to backfill with nice nutrient rich soil obviously right there's more to it than that though these pots they lose a good amount of soil when they get thrown onto the truck and moved around you see how much is missing out of there so i generally need to mix up a lot to backfill these with and i like to make sure it's nice good mix something nice and nutrient dense with some grit to help the plant along right potting soil not much to it top dress it with some good stuff every year you can help build it up and make it nice is it weird that when the construction equipment wasn't going when I came outside this morning, I was a little sad. I've gotten kind of used to the background noise and it's quieter now. It hasn't really bothered me, period, except for in regards to the audio for these videos, but I don't really care. It's only for a couple weeks, so it's not a big deal, but I kind of like it. It's been fun watching and I don't know. Maybe it's also because the pool's off. I think there's a leak in here. I have a leak kit. I've been going around trying to find it. I'm not finding it, but there's no reason this thing should have lost like two inches of water last night that's kind of weird so memorial day weekend just got a pool here that can't really use it's okay champagne problems i'm not going to complain about that it's it's okay now it's getting louder got my hand over the mic near my mouth that may help i don't know heliconias are supposed to come in the mail today that's exciting and then uh oh, home depot i'm gonna go do that i'll try and film it's usually very loud there so it's too loud then would just be cutting back to right here and i didn't even need to be talking about needing to go get sand to mix in with the backfill maybe this was all just a waste of time who knows it's brown but i went in and i still got it because i still need sand to put in here i don't think i'll actually be able to use any of the stuff from when i was at home depot the sand it was brown the music there was so loud which is kind of fun when you're shopping but obviously that's not going to work for the youtube uh there's the sand it's brown but that's fine for just mixing into soil to add some grit and help with drainage also look at these check these out look at these aren't they just beautiful they're super tunia persimmon is that what this says down here yeah super tunia persimmon up to 24 inch so nowhere near as aggressive as a vista when they get going but i was just saying 
not that long ago in this video, yesterday for me, it's a moment ago for y'all that I want some orange. This isn't orange by any means, but it's given me the same vibe as orange, if that makes any sense at all. It's a nice tropical colored petunia. It's not a calabrac, not a petcoa. Petunia, that name is supposed to imply vigor and strength. Hopefully that will be the case. I know a few years ago they released the Bermuda Beaches. I was not a fan. They did not do well, but then they stopped selling them and then they brought them back so I think that they realized that there was something off with those and I assume they fixed them because I'm seeing them everywhere and they look pretty good. And maybe these have been around. I don't know. They probably have been and I'm just off my game. I haven't been paying attention. I think these are beautiful. I like them more than the Vista Bubblegum. Not going to be the same thing, right? But that color I think will look great in those containers over there, probably in the front of the Queen right here. That makes more sense than the Vista Bubblegum. And then maybe over here. I need to watch the light because with the maple tree being gone, I'm, I'm kind of confused about the lighting. And I haven't been paying attention to all of the spots. Like there are areas where I've been watching to see what the lighting is going to be like, but then there are other areas I've just been completely forgetting to pay attention. Oh, and the heliconias are here. That's what we should be talking about. Look at the heliconias. Yeah, they look a little bit rough, but that is to be expected. They were shipped. So, you know, it's just what you get sometimes. These are the Chaconianas, typical abundant Citricorum type heliconia. One of the boxes, the plant was not secured in and it's completely smashed. So I'm gonna send them an email about that because it wasn't secured in the package or anything. So I opened the box up and it was just upside down in the box on top of itself. Maybe they'll do something about that. I always expect a certain level of damage and sadness to the plants when they're shipped. That's just to be expected, but when it's not secured in any way, shape, or form in the box and it's just upside down and there's nothing written on the box indicating what direction that it's supposed to be, which was the case with these, not quite as forgiving <laughs> when there's not much done to secure the plant or make sure the package isn't slipped upside down. Maybe they'll replace it or refund it. I don't know. It's will be okay eventually, but it's going to take some time to recover and I didn't pay for plants that need to recover. We'll look into that. The others look great. They're beautiful. Can't wait to get those potted up. I think that this might be the, oh no, no. I was about to say goodbye. Not yet. Oh, and I also grabbed another one of the tricolor is what these pots say on them, right? I didn't actually check this one, which would have been smart of me before I left so that I could identify. Yeah, that says tricolor. That's what they're labeled as. Like I said, usually you can find them under the name Tequila Sunrise or Love on the Beach is what I'm saying <laughs> for YouTube and appropriateness on YouTube. This is the only one that I could find that had similar leaves to it. The, they do tend to have a more cupped leaf on them. It, none of the flowers were open though, so it was a bit of a gamble. But the pot says tricolor, which I assumed meant hopefully one of these or perhaps one of those bushes where it's three different plants. I would not have been happy if that were the case. But since this one over here says tricolor, I think should be good. And I peeled this open just a smidge and it looks like that's the right plant. So I'll be able to get those up into these deck box planters, which yeah, I might have to wait a minute because I have to take these down and dump them out and start them over with fresh slow because it's been a few years. Annuals rearranged, got things ready to go with the impatience. As y'all know, just spent a pretty good amount of time talking about all of that. Going to be plopping colocasias around into various containers and uh, same thing over here with the heliconias. And this is where I have to wrap it up because it's so loud. Not as loud as it was though. Next video is going to be the garden tour. So I figure instead of bringing everybody along and watching me do all this and then just reiterating it in the next video, maybe leave an element of surprise with some of the stuff to get to see things more up close and all that fun stuff. I don't know. That in the video is getting long and I still need to edit it. Y'all know a common brand of pool filter sand or just a sand that's nice and white that I might be able to get a hold of. Let me know, comment down below. Ideas on identifying the palm trees, like I was saying, maybe Pseudophoenix. I don't know. Thanks for hanging out. It was an exciting week getting the palms in. There's more exciting stuff going on down there at the other end of the pool we'll be talking about during the garden tour. Final pieces of the puzzle are here so I can really get moving and going, and I am so excited. One of my favorite times of the year, and just start popping things into pots. All right, hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Camera doesn't like that ginger. Oh, cactus update. 
See, it's it's fine. Standing back up. Got some water and some sun. Looks like it's feeling good. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.